As early as 1955, just four years since the first Yajna, Swami Chinmayananda had the vision for a modern day Gurukula, where young men and women would be trained on the philosophy of Advaita Vedanta so that they could then take the knowledge back to their communities. He mentioned this plan in Chennai, then in Mumbai, and again in Delhi and at Hyderabad. He kept at it until he gathered enough supporters. We need an army of Vivekanandas all over the country. The problems in our country are so severe that they no longer can be remedied by even a handful of persons. Thus, I have to start many training centers, he would say. Eight years later, his vision was materialized in 1963. In Powai, Bombay, construction of the Sandipani Sadhanalaya was complete. Named after Lord Krishna's guru, Rishi Sandipani, this institution is a residential training academy for Advaita Vedanta. The curriculum included the following study of various scriptural texts, mainly the Prasthanatreya or the Upanishads, Bhagavad Gita and the Brahma Sutras, Sanskrit grammar, Vedic chanting, various devotional masterpieces such as Tulasi Ramayanam, Srimad Bhagavatam, Narada Bhakti Sutra and many more. Original compositions of spiritual masters such as Sant Jnaneshwar and Bhagavan Ramana Maharishi were also studied. Sandipani Sadhanalaya was built entirely through collections during Swamiji's Jnana Yajnas. The land was donated generously by Mrs. Tara Swarup. But here again, the journey was not easy. Swamiji taught the first Vedanta course himself. Thirty students had enrolled. Only sixteen survived the grueling course, of which only four stayed on to work for the mission. Swamini Sharada Priyananda, Swamini Gangananda, Swami Jyotirmayananda, and Swami Purushottamananda. Since Swamiji had to teach full-time at Sandipani, he had planned to stop his Jnana Yajnas for three years. But within one year, there was no more money left to run the ashram. Swamiji had to take frequent breaks from teaching to continue the Yajnas. I need to use my one square inch of assets to raise funds, he would say, referring to his tongue. He would be gone for ten days at a time to conduct a yajna, and he would tell his students, Don't waste a single minute. Do your own contemplation. The time I'm gone is a God-given opportunity for you. In a few years, Swamiji would personally plan and direct the construction of the Jagadishwara temple on the ashram grounds. Notes in his diary reveal how he painstakingly collected funds and material for the temple, as well as the events of the day of the temple's initiation ceremony. The Kalasha, honored with the decorated silk umbrella, an offering from Kolingodi Palace, the Kerala touch heightened the beauty of the function. Swamiji, seen in a special mood, sprinkling Ganga water upon thousands of devotees who assembled to witness this rare ceremony. In the sprawling gardens of Powai, on the majestic Mount of Sandipani, springs into life the Shiva temple on 10th Sunday, November 1968 the edifice of splendor that houses the Jagadishwara. The rising dome over the Garbhagriha itself is a Shivalinga, clothed in space, Chidambaresha. Here is a look at the altar of Sandipani Sadhanalaya. Swamiji's Jnana Yajnas 
continue to attract large crowds throughout India. One such yagya in October 1969 conducted in Bhopal had special significance. A young boy of 20, Sudhakar, was a student of physics but was searching for something deeper. Seeing a banner on Swamiji's yagya, he decided to attend even though he had never heard of a Swami Chinmayananda. They say that when a deserving student yearns deeply for the spiritual path, divine grace ensures that he is brought face to face with his Guru. When Sudhakar heard Swamiji talk, it was love at first sight. In just a few months, he would register himself at Sandipani. He would graduate successfully and was anointed as Brahmachari Vivek Chaitanya by Swamiji. For three years, he served as Acharya in various mission centers. His phenomenal memory, his proficiency in English, Hindi, Marathi and Sanskrit, his musical talents and above all his highly likable and approachable nature made him a very popular teacher. In 1983, Swami Chinmayananda initiated him into sannyasa bestowing upon him the name Swami Tejo Mayananda. Swamiji called him an exquisite teacher and appointed him as Acharya of the Sandipani Sadhanalaya Ashram in Bombay where he taught Vedanta courses in English. In 1989, he was posted as Acharya to the mission center in San Jose, California. In the last camp of Swami Chinmayananda in 1993 in Washington, D.C., he took Swami Tejo Mayananda to his room and told him, You will now have to go to India and take up the organizational work. You will have to go to every mission center. There will be some problems or difficulties which you will have to solve, but you don't worry. They all come as God's will and God will take care of them. Swami Tejo Mayananda would become the head of the Chinmaya Mission worldwide and known affectionately as Pujya Guruji. Let us hear him speak at the 50th anniversary of Sandipani Sadhanalaya in 2013. Our Param Pujya Gurudev gained spiritual knowledge practicing great penance. But he thought that this knowledge should be available to others with more comforts. Now you all are aware of Pujya Gurudev's life and how in the Himalayas in those days when there were no facilities of any kind he did tapas from a very tapasvi mahatma and that is our Swami Tapoanji Maharaj. He learnt In the Upanishad it is said Swadhyaya Pravachanabhyam na Pramaditavyam So you should study and also should propagate. Now propagation he could have done going from place to place giving lectures. But he followed the tradition of the Upanishad where he said Ama yantu brahmacharina swaha Vima yantu brahmacharina swaha Prama yantu dama yantu shama yantu Brahmacharina Swaha May all seekers of knowledge come to us. That's what the rishis were all the time praying. And that's what he did. That may all brahmacharis come here. So he himself studied. Then he taught. And he created a parampara. So the Sandipani Sadhana Lai was built to provide such facilities and opportunities to seekers of knowledge. At least they should have such an opportunity. After gaining knowledge, what you do, that is Yathe Chasi Tathakuru. 
truly speaking. Gurudev said, now what you like you do? There was no bond written or anything. Because his job was to release us, not bind us. <laughs> and therefore there was no such condition that you have to do this. And with this, Sandipari Sadhanale came into existence. This was only the beginning. Swami Chinmayananda would oversee the establishment of several such modern day gurukulas including Sandipani West, Sandipani Himachal Pradesh in Siddhabhari, Sandipani Andhra Pradesh, Sandipani Kerala, Sandipani Tamil Nadu, Chinmaya Sandipani in Bangalore, Karnataka and Sandipani Kolapur in Maharashtra. These institutions to this date serve as an oasis for spiritual seekers to arrive, learn, liberate themselves and continue the Guru Sishya Parampara that has brought us this far. Thanks to the vision, compassion and execution by one great saint, Swami Chinmayananda.